Hello people and welcome to Physics Online. I'm oh, sorry, welcome to Z Physics today. Uh, my name is actually Lewis Matheson from another channel called Physics Online and today I thought I'd answer some questions. Uh, so I suppose as tradition dictates we're going to start with question number one. Uh, you are one of the very first physics teaching YouTubers having produced uh, an incredible collection of over 900 videos. What inspired you to get started? Um, well, when I first started, I had no idea I'd make that many videos. In actual fact, I've got even more over my website. So I think I've made about, I don't know, about 2,000 videos in total. Um, but I basically started because uh, when I was a head of physics, I would set videos for my students to watch, to maybe watch before the lesson, to actually uh, maybe allow the students to, um, I suppose, do a bit of their own work. So in the lesson, they came ready equipped with the knowledge they needed to start learning. But I found that the videos which were out there, and there were some good videos, they didn't always cover exactly the points I needed them to learn about. Sometimes it was based on different curriculums, perhaps in different countries. Sometimes it was too basic, and at some other times it's actually at too high level. And I thought, nobody's really doing what I want my students to, to actually be watching at home to help them with their physics. I also had in mind that potentially I could monetize it. Uh, so maybe rather than having to do private tuition, I could have some small income in addition to my teaching salary. Um, and I thought if I can do this really well and put in the work, put in the time, put in the money, I can make a really good platform where any student can access all the videos that they need. So yeah, I suppose I did it, um, not with any particular interest in making films, but because I felt there was a need there for students to have access to really good physics teaching whenever they needed it. Okay, um, if you could give three tips to anyone to ace their A-level exams, what would those tips be? Um, right, the first one is that you've got to realise that it's down to you and it has to come from within. So it's not because your teacher is asking you to do the work, it's not because you're trying to please your parents, it's because you want to do well to get the highest grades possible in any of your exams. So the first thing you need is that self-motivation and the self-belief that you can improve your grade, and ultimately that's gonna carry you through, um, you through when times get difficult and you're getting questions wrong. So the first thing you need to have is that intrinsic motivation to do well and to want to do well at A-level physics. Now, I suppose a lot of you already have that. My second tip would be just to get your admin sorted. So that means, um, you know, the basic things like making sure you always arrive to the lesson thoroughly equipped, that you've always done the homeworks so that your teachers are asking you to do, and also keep in charge of all of the notes that you're taking. So when it comes to revision, what you're not doing is trying to sort of find uh, some work that you knew you had, or maybe you're making revision notes that you then lose. So being in charge of your admin means that you're completely in control of the situation, and that means that you're prepared for anything. Um, I suppose my third tip is to do as many questions as possible, okay? Now, there will at some point be past exam papers that you can be doing, but leave those towards the end of the course and in the run-up to your exams. There are a huge amount of questions that you can access on things like Isaac Physics, um, and I would say that if you've already had a go with Isaac Physics, you'll know that at times it can be a bit challenging, but it will get you to master a lot of the basics, especially when it, when it comes to calculations. It's going to really improve your mathematical ability, and it's going to improve the way that you make links between topics. And if you're wanting to go for the really high grades, you should be doing as, level, as many level four and level five questions, especially in year 13. Other questions you can do include the ones in your textbook that you've, you've probably got uh, in your bag somewhere. There are hundreds of questions there that you can be going through. But also, um, in the run of the exams, think about doing past paper questions under timed conditions. And not only do you need to do the question, but when it comes to marking your answer, you need to be very clear that you add more notes. So if there's something that you got wrong, maybe try and write in the correct answer and maybe analyse where you made the mistakes. Was it a lack of knowledge? Was it that you had maybe misread the question? Was it that um, maybe you answered a different question that you thought they were asking? And a great way to really help you analyse all of the answers that you've given on any past papers is to have a look at the examiner reports. What these do is they basically um, give a roundup of uh, students' typical answers from across the country, and you can then see if you're making the same mistakes as other people, or if actually you're doing a lot better than many other people on those questions. So basically, the more questions you can do, 
the better prepared you're going to be for doing questions in the exam. And I would say um, the fourth bit of advice is go and have a look at alevelphysicsonline.com and also sign up for the premium plan to give you access to everything that I've ever made. But that's like tip number four. Right, question number three. Um, what do you think are the key points for transition from GCSE to A-level? Um, right, so first of all, uh, GCSE, it's good, but it's not that mathematical. Whereas A-level, they're going to hit you with a lot of math that they just expect you to know. So you have to understand about trigonometry, about using Pythagoras, and actually when's the right time to use that bit of maths. So I think that GCSE physics is good, but because lots of people do it, they're kind of doing it for like the sort of the lowest common denominator. Whereas A-level, there's only a select few people who actually choose to do A-level physics. And that means the demand, um, I suppose it increases quite dramatically. If you think about what you're doing in year 11 to what you're expected to do in year 12. So I would say the biggest thing about the transition to A-level physics is to get your math sorted. Now there are guides that you can get to help improve your math skills. A lot of you are going to be doing A-level maths alongside A-level physics anyway and in time your mathematical ability because you're doing so many equations and so many problems all the time that's going to really increase but I would say work on your maths to really help you with A-level physics. And also, like everything, I've got some videos about this. Um, I think there'd be a link beneath this video, but I've got a series of videos about the transition from GCSE to A-level physics, including a recap of some of the stuff you did at GCSE, plus an introduction to all of the new knowledge that you're going to be learning about as you go from year 11 into year 12 into year 13. Okay, what are some strategies that students could use to catch up on any lost learning during the pandemic? Um, yeah, the pandemic, it's been pretty rubbish for pretty much everybody. And even the people who've been doing a lot of work at home, and they might have, you might have had like a fantastic, um, you know, fantastic set of online lessons delivered by your teachers, but that can't replace the time that you spend in the lab with other people learning from people face to face. And online videos are good, but they can never replace that human face to face teaching, which has to happen. Um, how can you catch up on any lost learning during the pandemic? I would say that um, you've got to start sooner rather than later. Don't think, well, I'll, I maybe missed this stuff and I'll learn it when I'm doing my revision for your exams. Try and do as much of a catch up now, you know, sooner rather than later. And that means when it comes towards the end of your course and you're kind of preparing for exams, you're not having to relearn new material. You're only revising stuff that you already have a good understanding of. So I would say in terms of lost learning, have a go at doing as much of that at the moment. And that might be as simple as getting your GCSE revision guide and maybe just reading through it. Even though you're doing A-level physics now, just by looking back at some of the material that you will have covered at GCSE, if it's about transformers, if it's about the motor effect, stuff that you might not have been taught at the end of year 11, you might not be taught it in year 12, but if you make sure that you're familiar with the GCSE content, that's going to really help give you a good baseline of knowledge that you then build on as you go into A-levels. Unfortunately, there's no quick one magic tip. You've just got to put the time into it. Do I have a favourite part of physics I enjoy teaching the most? Um, I suppose the stuff that I really like is to do with mechanics and also the work on materials. This is partly because when I was at school, um, I liked A-level physics, but I really, really liked the mechanics modules in A-level maths. And that partly influenced me to go to university to study mechanical engineering, where I did a load more stuff about looking at material properties and so on. So for me, the stuff that I really like teaching about include things like stress and strain, um, perhaps, you know, even just simple stuff like looking at Hooke's law, and also the mechanics problems, you know, perhaps things like circular motion and... Uh, were well, even some of the advanced things, which not everybody does, but there are some really great uh, topics about rotational dynamics, about you know things which are accelerating in a circular path. I really love that part of mechanics, um, and especially the stuff that's in A-level physics. Right, the next one um, is about Lego, because basically when I started making videos, I didn't always have access to equipment. I had a bit of Lego which I used to help explain stuff and then since then I've used a lot of Lego in my videos. What's the most elaborate physics equipment you've built from Lego? I would say 
I built this a couple of weeks ago, I've just finished it, is I have built this out of Lego. Um, quite a mundane thing, but this is actually just a power supply, the kind of thing that uh, you just plug in when you're building electric circuits. Um, and I made the whole thing out of Lego, so I've got like the, the part where you can plug it in on the back, I've got the different um, settings here for either AC or DC and the dial here that you can turn and the, the button to turn it on. So personally, I'm quite impressed with this myself. Um, but you know, I think with Lego, it can be um, used for sort of stuff like that. But also you can explain really, really difficult bits of year 13 or even stuff beyond A-level by using Lego to try and visualize what is often quite a difficult topic. And lastly, a tip for teachers. What makes a good educational video? Um, I think that when you're making a good educational video, you've got to remember that it's going to be normal students watching it and they could turn off at any time. And that means you've got to make it engaging. You've got to get to the point. Um, and I think you've got to use the, um, the camera and other things in the best way possible. Some things are better taught face to face. But there are other things, perhaps if you're doing something which is quite detailed, you know, like you would do on a visualizer in the classroom, that you can really bring to life with um, a camera. You can also film things several times until it actually works. You know, if the experiment doesn't work in real life, you can do it several times and then you can get the footage of when it does work to show the students. Um, and I think as well, you've got to imagine that as you're talking to the camera, there's another real life person there watching this. I'm hoping that somebody's still watching this video at this point. So yeah, for teachers, just be yourself. Act in the way that you would do in the classroom. And remember that as you're talking to the camera, you're really just talking to another person who wants to learn that physics. So um, thank you so much for watching. Make sure that you do subscribe to this channel, to Z Physics, because I know that there's a huge amount more um, to come. And also you can, of course, subscribe to me over at Physics Online and have a look at my website, A-Level Physics Online in particular, if you need a bit more help with anything for A-Level Physics. So thank you so much. Goodbye.